All right, so I just wanted to do a follow-up on a follow-up video I did some time ago when we had a latency issue uh, with the uh, Presonus, the NSB network stage box, and the uh, Presonus console we were using, the Studio Live 32SC. All right, so just as a reminder, uh, we had an issue during an event where uh, we were using this setup along with our uh, 32SC, and there was about a one second delay in the audio that was uh, taking place. Now, I was at the stage at the time. I wasn't at front of house, but Dennis at front of house indicated something had happened and we lost audio. Now, and talking with Dennis and working out this situation, the issue really ultimately was not a latency issue. It was we actually dropped audio. A big difference between latency and dropping audio. So right after doing that video that I posted as a follow-up to this, I worked on this for a few hours. And well, actually, it's many, many hours. Uh, but most of that time was spent uh, running an MP3 player through this and waiting for something to happen that was going to cause the audio to drop. Now, when I did this, when I set this up in that last video, uh, there was no audio dropout, uh, but the problem ended up not being the console, uh, nor being the really being the NSB. So in researching what was going on, I've made some changes. Okay, so the first thing I did, and this is uh, based upon the Personas documentation, is we were actually using this, this uh, port over here on the left as a primary, and we were using this one here as a secondary. But uh, the Personas documentation says use the uh, port B, which is the right one, Use that one if you're going to do a direct connect into a console, which is what we're doing. So I've now made this right side the uh, primary side. Okay, the second thing I did was I adjusted the sampling rate. This is all intentional. So what I had to do was tell the NSB box, well, actually, I wanted to make sure that the NSB box was set at a 48K sampling rate. I think it was uh, at the time this stuff was going on, but... Um, there's a little bit of a process to go through to ensure that the NSB is set at 48K. So uh, when I went through the process, I had set this to 41K uh, intentionally. And then once that was set, I then reset it to 48K, which is what it's at right now. So this just ensures that um, the NSB box and the console are both synced at a 48K sampling rate. All right, and uh, to ensure that I had clean power, uh, meaning a regulated, a voltage regulated power on the NSB, I had a spare uh, voltage regulator uh, laying around, so I've added this to the rack. Uh, UPS actually connects directly into this. So if this, if we were to lose main power, in other words, if we were to lose the power that this device is connected to, the UPS will run everything, just, you know, hopefully just for a moment. Uh, before the power can get restored. So what this device does is it takes the input voltage, what, whatever it is, up to, I believe it's 135 volts maybe. That's what it looks like, maybe 130 volts. It takes that voltage and it'll step it down to 120 volts, which is what the US uses. And if the voltage is low, let's say it gets down around, looks like maybe 100 volts or so, it will step up the voltage to 120 volts. That's so whatever it is that's plugged into here or even into the UPS, it's getting a constant 120 volts. Now, during this, the uh, event, when we had everything up and running, this was not in use. I've got the NSB and other things over here connected to the uh, voltage regulator. After the first uh, follow-up video was made about the, uh, the audio dropout, I set all this stuff up again. I don't have a video of that. About 30 minutes into it, into playing some music through the system, the audio dropped out. So then after that, I reset everything, got everything up and running again, and I didn't hear any dropouts for close to two hours. So in the next days that followed, I set the system up and I would let it run for a while, but I couldn't get it to, to, uh, to drop the audio till one day when I was listening to some music and I decided to put a uh, microphone through it and I went up to it and I connected a mic directly into it like this 
the uh, sinking was lost. There was a buzz that came through the, the PA and there was no audio taking place at all. All right, so that told me I had a grounding problem. And when I'm talking about the grounding, it was the grounding in the, in the shielded uh, Ethercon cable. Okay, so the cable I'm using here is not the cable I was using at the event, uh, but this is the cable that I was using for a setup. And this cable is not a Cat5, this is a Cat6A cable, and it is uh, 150 feet, but it is a shielded cable. But this is the problem with the cable is that it was shielded. And when it's shielded, it means it's grounded here and it's grounded at the back of the uh, stage box. So when I had the mic and this other cable, I had a lot of static electricity that was already sort of charged in me. So when I went up and I touched this unit here, it sort of sh temporarily short-circuited everything in here between the console and the NSB. All right, so now that I know what happened and what's going on, I knew what I needed to do to correct it. So in this shielded cable, what I ended up doing was removing the shield, but I've only removed the shield on one end. So basically, this cable is no longer a shielded twisted pair, but it's a unshielded twisted pair, that'd be a UTP cable. Now what's sort of interesting about this is that Presonus does indicate that it's okay to use UTP cable, unshielded twisted pair cable. But however, in their documentation, they still indicate that the use of shielded twisted pair may be needed for certain environments. But for this particular type of setup, an unshielded twisted pair cable is what was needed. And on one end, I've pulled that ground off and I've got it taped internally so it doesn't touch any of the jacketing or anything. So once I got it taped off and everything and I, I set this up, I probably ran it for maybe three or four hours. Uh, I would occasionally walk, walk around here in the shop area. I'd work on stuff, just let the music play, and I would come up and I would try, I would just plug something into the NSB to try to get it to, if you will, sort of short out. Uh, but that never happened. So the answer to our problem is the use of unshielded twisted pair cable. The audio dropout could have occurred when somebody on stage uh, grabbed the mic, uh, either to move, the, reposition the mic or just to move stuff out of the way. All right, I think that's about it. Just sort of do a summary of what I did. Uh, on the NSB, we're now using uh, port B as the primary port. Uh, on the console, uh, we set, we purposely set the sample rate back down to 44.1 uh, just to uh, tell the stage box, hey, go down to 44.1. And then we reset the console back to 48K uh, on the sampling rate. And then that told the uh, NSB box, oh, it needs to be running at 48K. I don't think the NSB was running at 44.1 uh, when the console is 48. But anyway, we just did it anyway to make sure it was okay. And uh, other thing we did was add our uh, voltage regulator. And the biggest thing we did that really, uh, I want to say probably the lion's share of the problems here, is that we removed the ground on the, uh, on the tactical cable. And that has, uh, I believe that was the big thing that corrected it. So. Anyway, just a follow-up, uh, I think our problem is solved. I hope it is. Uh, we're looking forward to taking the unit back out. All right. Thanks for watching.